Hey everyone, and welcome back for exercise three of Practical CSS Grid. I hope you spent some time playing with that automatic resizing in exercise two. That's really gonna be some of the last we're gonna see of more traditional design styles. As we move into exercises three, four, and five, we're gonna see more and more how Grid can be utilized to spice up those traditional pieces. Here in exercise three, I'm really excited to start showing off some of the power that Grid has over design asymmetry. We're gonna use the inherent two-dimensional flow from CSS Grid to create a grid of items that have different sizes and utilizing different sized rows to accommodate those sizes. Now in traditional layout, in flow-based layout or flex-based layout, this would all be accomplished with a lot of containing divs. Uh, in this case, we're gonna still have almost the identical markup that we've had in the past, but we're going to place our items uh, at various sizes and allow Grid to automatically find the spots that fit these new items. So we're gonna go ahead and move into our exercise. So you'll notice again, we've wiped away our grid and we are left with our block level elements. Our HTML is going to look very, very similar to how it has been in the past few exercises with one small addition. Each of our articles now also has a corresponding class of large, medium, or small. This is going to allow us to affect different sizes and different column and row spans for each of these articles. So we're gonna move down into our CSS, and just as we have in the past, we're going to define our grid with display colon grid, and then we're going to define our grid template columns, and instead of specifying just the three columns we've had in the past, we're going to have five columns this time. And as you might have guessed, we can either do one FR five times in a row, or we can specifically come in and use that repeat function that we used in exercise two, and actually just say five comma one FR. And that's gonna give us five columns for our content to go inside of. So we re refresh the page and we see five of our cards across the way and then three on the next line because we still have only eight items. We're gonna go ahead and define a grid gap just because we want things to look nice and tidy. And we are going to then move into how we want these items to span their areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and define out our article medium and our article large selectors. And this is going to allow us to trigger different sizes based on these. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a new child level CSS property. We're going to specify the grid column for these. Now in the future, I'm gonna show you how you can actually lay things out in specific grid cells. But for now, we're just gonna say grid column and we're going to tell it to span a certain number of columns. So in this case, we're gonna tell the medium to span two, and we're going to tell the large grid column to span three. So our average article will span one, our medium will span two columns, and our large will span three. And let's take a look at what that does to our grid. All right, so first and foremost, you may notice we now have a whole bunch of additional white space that you may not have thought was going to appear there. But Grid, as a rule, wants to keep the source order of our markup intact. And so in this case, items one and two inside of our source order both want to span three columns. There's not enough room in one row to have that, and so it breaks onto the next line. And you can see on our next line here that we have a large item and a medium item. So we've got three plus two, and that equals the five columns. And then the next row has three one-span items. And then we can't fit another three span item and so that breaks onto the next row as well. So this creates some awkward white space in our design. And this is not what we want. It's not what I promised in that finished product. And so we're going to use a sorting algorithm in CSS and something that we don't have to think about. CSS in the browser is gonna do all this for us. And we're gonna go back to the parent element and we're gonna utilize a new property for grid. And that is the grid auto flow. 
And this is going to allow us to basically specify one of a few keywords. The main one that we're going to use is dense, and that's going to densely pack our grid along those columns. So if I save this in and we look back at the page, we now see that the third item, which is our first medium item, now is in the second position in our grid. Now, if you have these dated and you need things to go in a specific order, obviously this won't make much sense, but this auto flow allows for the movement of items inside your grid without the movement of your markup. So one set of markup can serve many purposes. And as you can see, as we move down the page, we have three, uh, three and then two, three and then two one span items, a one span item, a three span item, and a one span item. This is an incredibly interesting layout. Now it's not an ideal layout necessarily. There is a lot of white space in our cards, which we can fix the same way we have fixed it in the past. And that is to attach a grid to our child element as well. So we can actually come in here and say display grid, and we can tell it to align items start. And then we can tell the article buttons to align self end. And this will give us those buttons anchored to the bottom, or at least close enough. The problem with this being these are incredibly tall areas. Um, so let's take a look at the inspector and see what we can do to make this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and turn on Firefox's grid inspector for the item that we're looking at. And you can see it has four rows uh, and inside of that there are four pieces of content. Uh, our aligned items is set to start and our button is not. And that is unfortunately because I typoed that class name as I had done once before. And we're gonna change that over to article button. And we're gonna see uh, not a beautiful design, but at least an anchored button there at the bottom. So again, this doesn't make much sense for the content that we have. And so what we're going to do now is move into the realm of not just one dimensional thinking, and that is our columns or our rows. We're going to start laying out our content over multiple rows together. And to do that, we're gonna do the same thing we did for column, but we're gonna come down here and we're going to specify our medium and our large can now span additional rows as well as columns. So our medium will span two rows and our large will span three as well. Grid dash row span three. And so now we have small items, which are just the regular articles, and they're going to span one column and, and one row. Our medium will span two and two, and our large will span three and three. And we'll use that grid auto flow dense to densely pack our items inside of that grid. So we'll come back up, we'll, ref we'll refresh the page, and now you can see that we have asymmetric grid areas that are automatically sizing based on the height of their content. Now we have one on the left-hand side and we have three densely packed on the right and that's because they're spanning multiple columns themselves. And so what we've done here is allow for the densely packed algorithm to place content in interesting and new ways across multiple rows. All right, so you may have noticed that we still have a little bit of an issue here, and that's that's these two items uh, appear to be different sizes, and it's not exactly the layout that was in this area here. And I think that's actually due to our content and not due to grid itself. And so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our HTML, and we're gonna probably find that we have a small, yep, here it is, we have a small article that's not meant to have that image. So this should either be a medium, article or it should be a small article with no image. And you can see even with the densely packed uh, auto flow, we still can only fit so much. And so this is highly dependent on the way you want your content to be. And the more flexible your content layer, the more flexible your good becomes. So in this case, we're gonna have this one go to be uh, small again, and we're gonna take out that image and we're gonna refresh the page. And then we're also gonna change that last item, that last large item to a medium item. And you can see now we have a nice densely packed grid uh, that's actually kind of got its own little sense of uh, vertical asymmetry that we didn't have before. 
Uh, obviously, as you work through this, you're going to want to talk about the mobile design aspect. And a lot of that's going to be just simplifying the design down uh, to not have the asymmetry at smaller sizes. And you can very easily do that by redefining your grid and redefining grid row and grid span uh, inside of those breakpoints uh, at that point. This is not one of those cases where you'll be able to have an automatically sized grid. You're actually gonna to wanna to have those breakpoints set up, but that allows for a lot of additional control. So as you can see, we can now start playing with no new markup, a large scale asymmetric vertically and horizontally layout on the web. And what's really, really cool about this is it allows us to change on the fly the way that these work, either by inserting a different class or by inserting a new, a new class that has some new properties on it. So what I would like for you to do is go ahead and after this exercise, start adding more items into this grid and figure out new flows for how your large, medium, and small can all play together to make this look amazing. And I'll see you in exercise four where we're gonna start talking about big hero images and how we can automatically make these art directed on the web. See you there.